My old principal back in the day said to me during an observation, you don't need to bring in an elephant to teach the color gray. And I wholeheartedly disagreed. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. Could be 2 a.m. My name is Mr. Gruber, and I'm a physics teacher here at East Chester High School. Everything in the world is physics. I'll get messages back from students go, Gruber, I saw this happen, and immediately I thought physics. You were right. You made the world different for me. I would rather show them the physics, learn from the examples that I show them, and do a couple of problems in class, because all that's on the test. So many of the region's questions are based on demonstrations, and I'll look at a question and say, oh, I did that demo in class. That's good, there's your marquee. Here's the princess cut, give me another hit. Hit the difference in the marquee. You teach to life and it all falls into place. It, they'll pick it up with the life lessons they get with all the demonstrations. Like I have to amaze them on a first day. And what I do is I set up my bed of nails, which I built in my first year of teaching back in 1991 and I have the heaviest students stand on me. And that wows them to no end. And then on open school night, the parents come in and a lot of them stand on me also. You can see them wincing because they think that their husband's gonna crush me and, and it never happens, but. This foot, you're gonna put this foot right there. Okay, now hold on. Um, now reach over, grab his hand. Okay, now you're just gonna stand, the other foot goes right next to it, whenever you're ready. Okay, I gotcha. Okay, help balance them. Get some pictures here. Okay, there we go. Smile, getting some good pictures. Okay. In the water balloon launch, kids have to use projectile motion calculations to calculate the horizontal distance that I have to stand from the launcher so that they can hit me accurately with a water balloon. They do it all from measurements of distance and time and angle. If they hit me, it's a good day for them. And pretty much every student hits me. That's a great, that's a great feeling. Oh, there we go. Oh. After all that, what did you learn today? Physics is real. <sighs> and it's wet. <laughs> there, he's, he's been in the background the whole time, hasn't he? I put Minnie me in a cart, taped him down, and the cart rolls down the hill, and just Minnie me looks just so awkward just standing there like this as he's standing. And then the cart hits the wall and just boom. He goes, he he becomes that body in motion, staying in motion. And no, it's all it's just about collecting distance and time data to get an acceleration, but it's just a goofy way to show it. Again, bringing in Minnie me to teach the color gray. Kids are coming into the class and they come in listening to Dancing Queen. They have no clue why Dancing Queen is on. And then I proceed to teach them Newton's Third Law. And the problem with Newton's Third Law is, it's, the, the, the definition is every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which means nothing to the students. So I go with, if A pushes B, B pushes A simultaneously with the same force. So they have to go into a problem and assign something an object A and something has to be an object B. And the, every question will be, if A pushes B, B pushes A. So they gotta look, know what A and B are. And all of a sudden, they'll, as, as they're writing A, B, B, A in the problem, they'll see the word ABBA.
I was shopping online and I saw this place called Harbor Freight just started. And I looked on their website and sure enough they had a block and tackle for $50. That's a great price. And I brought that demonstration into the classroom and to this day, some of the students say that was one of the greatest demonstrations they saw in class. When they were able to lift themselves with a pulley system by exerting very little force to lift themselves off the ground. Uh, but when I, when I was like, you know, under 200 pounds, it was a lot easier. Being a 230 now, and a lot of people don't trust themselves with the bowling ball. Okay. Hands down. Physics. <laughs> okay. You can put your hands down. Dude, he, oh, it's a subtle flinch. That's good, you won't. Ah, you flinched. Uh. It's the best way to show the kids of the conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy. To show that once you lift a ball up to a certain height, you give it a set amount of potential energy. That's its energy, its total energy. When you let go, that energy might turn into kinetic as it speeds up towards the bottom. But when it swings back up to you, it cannot go higher than it started. Because that would mean the law of conservation of energy was broken and it gained more energy and went higher. Hands out, this is good. Look at you. Dude, that was a programmer carefully on the way. And you get a couple of kids that don't flinch and they become they become legends. You know, they become GOAT, they become OG masters. solve and that can help them in any facet of life you can problem solve in physics you can problem solve on Wall Street uh, a lot of times uh, physics major will go into patent law because they know what they know enough how to analyze a system so they can analyze patents I want to wholeheartedly thank the East Chester School District all past parents and present parents you welcome me into your community you let me teach your students physics you let my children come here and they got to experience the East Chester education and all the great teachers we have here and all the great people we have in this town. Thank you so much for that.